by Sri Lanka's best internet package for online learning and online working with many amazing offers. Call 1212 for more information. Sri Lanka Telecom. Lenka, tu kuma wedi karaga ne? Lao ju rupyal panata du kala. Mama, en api te ekak bom. Tonight, lockdown lockup. Valikada remand prison on lockdown after transfer drug suspect test positive for COVID-19. Rapid action. Suspects in Russian nationals goal face assault nabbed within eight hours by police. A matter of conscience. Narcotics Bureau inspector wanted for drug racketeering links surrenders to police as underworld crackdown continues. Delayed justice. Court of Appeal issues interim injunction, preventing arrest of Ravi K and bond scam cohorts. All this and much more coming up on this Tuesday, the 7th of July, 2020. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana first at nine. Nava sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Mal Suandin. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Shinala Fernando in your top stories for tonight. A prison inmate brought to the Valikada prison from the Kandakaru Rehabilitation Centre has tested positive for COVID-19. With that, the chief epidemiologist of the epidemiology unit, Dr. Sudat Samaravira, stated that there is a possibility of the virus being transmitted to others from him. Furthermore, he also stated that nearly 400 to 600 PCR tests will be conducted at the Valikada Remand prison due to this discovery. In the meantime, COVID-19 recovery is increased up to 1,955 bringing Sri Lanka's recovery rate up to 93.9%. A prison inmate who transferred from the Treatment and Rehabilitation Centre in Kandakadu to the Valikata prison for a video court hearing has tested positive for COVID-19. This was confirmed following a PCR test that was conducted prior to his hearing. The infected prison inmate had been sent to the Rehabilitation Centre on 20th March and was then transferred to the Polonaro Riman prison on the 26th of June. Furthermore, it was also revealed that the inmate had been transported to the Valikada Riman prison along with 40 other prisoners. Hedi Kandagadu in Raganapu Sirudinama, PCR Parishanwal to Bajanekala Dibuna, Eanua, Ethra Sitipo Hatris Tenage, Kudgaleku, Mea Karing, Covid Asadini Vieti Bauta, Adadine di Taharuna, Mea Asadinu, Pudgalea, Randela Hiti, Valikada Bandanagare, Udakala Karapu. वाट टू का ये वाट टू का तावे कसी हत्या हत्या रदेन को सीतिया में कसी हत्या हत्या रदेन नाम आधा दिन ये दी पीसीआर परीक्षण वाले टा बाजे ने करने लग बुआ किसे नमूद होंगे पीसीआर परीक्षण वार्ता आधा रात्रि काले वो हेट दी उदयासन लेबी मटर नियमित आय ये उन्हत ते पीसीआर परीक्षण ने कर पे कसी हत्या हत्या Accordingly, steps were taken by prison officials to admit the infected inmate to the epidemiology unit. Furthermore, investigations are currently underway to identify the associates of the inmate, as steps were taken to subject the other inmates and officials inside the prison to PCR tests. Following this incident, visits to the Valicutta prison have been suspended until further notice. मैं तथ्य तुलना होगे अनिता ऐट कोविड धानवे होगे पैतरी में आवधान मक्तियों कत्ता कार्डो पुरुषोत्तम अपने मध्यस्थाने वाके में वैली कड़ सेरे कांडुरे तो हो समग्र सिटी अनेत पुत्गले इन ओहा समग्र गेटुनो बातें नागार निर्दारिन वैनी परिस निरोधायने क्रीम सहा पीसीआर परीक्षण क्रीम में आवस्था जिसिदु कर्मी पा� 
කාලයේ කොහොමද ගමන් බිමන්ගේ කාවද හමුනේ ඒ පුනකුත් අවන මධ්‍යස්ථානයේ සිටි කෙනෙක් වේලාසනින් නිදහස් කර යවා තියනවද ඔවුන් නිදහස් කළා තියනවා නම් කොහෙද ගියේ ඒ වගේ කරුණු අනුව ඔවුන් හඳුනාගෙන ඔවුන්ව පරීක්ෂා කිරීමට ඒ වගේම ඔවුන් ජීවත් වෙන ප්‍රජාවන්ගේ ගම්මාන වලත් අපිට පරීක්ෂාව සිදු කරන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා ඒ ආසාදිත්‍යාගෙන් තව කී දිනකට පැතිරලා තියනවද කියන එක අපිට හිටානිද දවස්වල තුලත් අපිට දැනගන්න පුළුවන් ගණනය කිරීම කරලා නැද්ද බන්ධනාගාරයෙන් PCR පරීක්ෂණ සඳහා යවීම සඳහා සමහර විට PCR පරීක්ෂණ 400 600ත් අතර වගේ ප්‍රමාණයක් අපිට කරන්න මුල් අවස්ථාවේදී කිරීමට සිදු වේ යයි අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා in the meantime total recoveries in sri lanka increased up to 1955 following the discharge of 38 people in the past 24 hours with that development the country's active cases now stand at 114 Furthermore, Navy recoveries have also spiked to 888 after three more naval personnel recovered today. Meanwhile, the Department of Government Information revealed the dates for the annual Asla Festival at the historic Kathargama Devalaya. According to the statement released, the festival will commence on the 21st of this month and will conclude on the 4th of August with the water cutting ceremony at the Manik Ganga. This time around, however, the Asla Festival will work off with priority being given solely to religious observances in adherence to health and safety guidelines introduced by the government. Members of the public will not be allowed to participate in any religious activities or to watch the Perahara during the period. Furthermore, the public will not be permitted to visit Kathargama during the Asla Festival period. In a separate development, nearly 275 Sri Lankans protested in front of the Sri Lankan embassy in Qatar, accusing the embassy of not taking action on their request to be repatriated. The inspector attached to the police narcotics bureau who has been in hiding following the uncovering of his links to a recently discovered drug racket surrendered to the Kadavatha police this afternoon following his surrender the criminal investigation department has detained him for 72 hours under the prevention of terrorism act for questioning meanwhile more gangsters were apprehended as the police crackdown on drugs and other underworld activities continues The police launched an operation to track down an inspector of police attached to the Police Narcotics Bureau for allegedly aiding drug racketeers along with 15 other PNB officers who were arrested recently. However, today the wanted police officer IP Saman Vasanta Kumar contacted Assistant Superintendent of Police Meryl Ranjan Lamaheva at the Criminal Investigation Department to turn himself in. He had then boarded a passenger bus from his residence in Kurunagala where he had been in hiding. However after getting cold feet and disembarking along the way in Kadavatha the wanted IP had then broken down weeping on the side of the road at which time officers of the Kadavatha police station had approached him and he had then identified himself as the IP wanted over links to the drug racket the police officers then handed him over to ASP Lamaheva of the CID Following this the CID had taken steps to detain and question the suspect. Investigations have revealed that a stash of heroin had been smuggled into the country by imprisoned drug dealer Camilla Spillay through drug kingpin Vele Suda. Officers of the Police Narcotics Bureau had then taken the stash of heroin into their custody before it reached an associate of Camilla Spillay. The stash of heroin had been hidden inside polysex at two safe houses of the PNB in Balapitiya and Mathura. The police suspect that a sack containing the heroin was delivered to another drug racketeer Rajita alias Kotteluku a resident of Badu Vita According to an order placed by Kos Gudatharaka the stash of heroin had then been unloaded at a house in Mahabage via a drug dealer named Siddiq Investigations revealed that a significant amount of the stash had been sold with 15 officers involved in the incident being interrogated under detention What's more an inquiry revealed that a former chief of the Negambo prison had exchanged money via a number of bank accounts on 35 occasions. He had used a prison guard to carry out the transactions. When questioned by the CID the prison guard revealed that the former prison chief had given him 5 to 6 envelopes per day filled with cash asking him to deposit money to accounts at various banks. According to the prison guard the envelopes were exchanged at the cafeteria of the Negambo prison. In further developments the special task force apprehended Krishan Nilangadabare alias Beba with 3 grams and 120 milligrams of heroin in Aturugiri yesterday 
police identified him as a close associate of underworld gang leader Angudu Lokka. It was also revealed that he is an accused in two murders in addition to the main suspect in a shooting at the residence of a secretary of former parliamentarian Sujeeva Sena Singh on the 26th of March 2018. He was remanded until the 20th of this month after being produced before the Kaduvela magistrate. Meanwhile, Sarath Ekanayaka alias Maharagamma Bubula, identified as a close associate of underworld figure Gagana, was arrested by the police in the Niyandagala area. Investigations are currently underway to determine his links with underworld figure Gagana, who is currently in remand custody. Five suspects arrested over the verbal and physical abuse of a Russian national at Golf Face Green on Sunday were remanded until the 10th of this month by Fort Magistrate Ranga Desanayaka today. They were arrested by the police following a complaint filed by the victim Anastasia April. The five suspects were also ordered to be produced for an identification parade when the case is taken up for hearing on the 10th of this month. On Sunday, Anastasia April, a Russian national, has visited Goldface Green with her partner along with several other friends. They were approached by a group of inebriated youth who proceeded to verbally abuse the Russian national, which was caught on tape. <laughs> Okay, okay, sorry. Very sorry. Go. Releasing the video footage to social media, Anastasia called for the support of the general public to identify the group of youth in order to bring them to book. The Fort Police arrived at the scene following a complaint being lodged by the Russian national and commenced an investigation into the incident, leading to the arrest of five suspects involved in the incident. We were just uh, hanging around with my friends, a group of boys, quite young, and they started to talk something to us. So we were trying to just pass it, leave them, but they started this attack. We tried to calm them down, it didn't work. So And they started actually hit him because he was protecting me. We tried to separate them because they actually were fighting. So I put out, out my camera, it was only one, one thing in my mind what I can do, and luckily it helped. When they've seen that I start filming them, one of them most probably realized that we somehow can use it against them. Finally, they left and we were calling police. In 20 minutes, they came. They found five people. And it really was very surprised for me. I didn't, honestly, didn't expect that this situation will be solved, that it will be solved that fast. So I really want to thank all these government, uh, police people, tourism department. I think they did an amazing job. Following their questioning, the suspects were produced before the Fort Magistrates Court this afternoon for an identification parade. After being produced before Fort Magistrate Ranga Disanayaka, the suspects were remanded until the 10th of July. The Fort Magistrate ordered another identification parade when the case is next heard on Friday the 10th of July. Meanwhile, taking to Twitter, the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority took note of the incident, stating that Sri Lanka tourism has zero tolerance towards harassment of tourists. Meanwhile, a resident of Kasbaba has been found murdered at his residence this morning. The victim has been identified as Prasanna Sagara Kumara, who runs a hotel in the area. The 50-year-old hotelier, who is the father of two, was murdered in the bedroom of his home, located near the hotel. He, along with his wife and two children, had been in the same bedroom at the time of the incident. A piece of a brick has been found on the bed where he was found dead. A closet in the adjoining room was seen opened and the belongings inside had been pulled out. The police also observed how the lock of a downstairs window had been broken. The wife of the deceased was hospitalized owing to injuries sustained during the incident. Investigations are being carried out to ascertain the reason behind the incident. The 
The Court of Appeals has issued an interim order preventing any arrest warrants from being issued against former Finance Minister Ravi Karunanayake and four others in connection with the 2016 Central Bank bond scam. The interim order will prevent any further warrants from being issued until the hearing of the writ application is concluded. The writ application alleges that the previous arrest warrant issued by the Colombo Fort Magistrates Court is illegal on the basis that the warrants were issued based on a police bureau report alone. The Court of Appeal has issued an interim order preventing the execution of arrest warrants issued by the Colombo Fort Magistrates Court on former Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayake and five others over the central bank bond scam. A writ petition was previously filed by Karnanayake, the Chairman of Perpetual Treasuries Limited Jeffrey Aloysius, CEO Kasun Palisena and former central bank officials Indika Saman Kumara and Sangara Pillay Padugunadan, who have been charged with allegedly misappropriating more than Rs 52 billion through government bond auctions in 2016. The petitioners had alleged that the Colombo Fort magistrates issuing of arrest warrants against them based on the B report submitted to court by the police is against the law and sought a revocation of the warrants by the appeals court. When the petition was taken up for consideration before the bench, comprising of the president of the Court of Appeal, HMD Nawaz, Justices Shiran Gunaratna and Sobita Rajakarna today, it was ruled that the interim order will remain in effect until the hearing of the petition is concluded. Further, instructions were also issued to the Kalamba Fort Magistrate to refrain from issuing arrest warrants on Ravi Karanaika and the other defendants. However, the three-judge bench noted that the interim order should not in any way hinder the ongoing investigations into the central bank bond scam. The appeals court bench also decided to issue notices on the respondents of the writ petition and ordered them to file objections within six weeks. The writ petition was then fixed for support on the 25th of August. More news on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Coronavirus Petrim Valakwan, Saban Nuda that so than me. Welcome back in more news. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa attended several election campaign events in the Kurunagala district in support of Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna candidates from the district. The Prime Minister urged the attendees to unite behind the SLPP to avoid any conflicts between the presidency and the parliament, such as was witnessed in the past five years, where a tug of war between former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and ex President Maitri Pala Sirisena effectively placed a block on any. Any national development. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa attended a Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumana campaign event in Virakatia in Madhabulana yesterday. Chesta Provasiant Pampat Mudula, Kapua Kiela, Adugara Kiela, Luku Prajaria, and the Patreka Daladino, Patapal Burua, Man Api, Sieta Palo, Api Tiel Dila, Apiduna, Anit Puli Aduna, Bangwim Adugara, me at Givanagana, Chesta Provasiant Devangana Kisita Alalare. Ivagi Buru Prachar, Mekali Yeno. Take a Patrola Dano, Mangan Patri, New Adikara Gila, Mammy Saskano. Take a Sampuna, Patapal Buru Kila, Mamaki and Dona Mudbage, Mamma Mudalamaturi, Mamma Adugani, then I got it. Mamma Dani, Mamma Dani, Mamma Dani, Mamma Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also attended another event in the Kurunagala district where he addressed SLPP candidates. During the event, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party's former Northwestern Province Chief Minister, Atuna Vijay Singer, received the Sri Lanka Podijana Perumana party membership. <laughs> Samagi Janabalavega leader Sajid Premadasa says that his party is the only party that has not engaged in plundering state assets in order to carry out political activities. Addressing a campaign event in Bulat Kohupitiya, he added that the Samagi Janabalavega's position as the official opposition has been cemented by criticism of his activities and policy statements by the government. Leader of the Samagi Janabalavega and Kalambu district candidate Sajid Premadasa Address the public event that worked off in Bulat Kahupitiya today. Matana Mitra Vruni, Magi Apexhatuman letter, Banku Java Rambling Horakankarbusal Divedanda Apitaneha, 
मुकद जावा रामकार देश पाल न्यापी कर लन है रटे जाति के संपत्त होरा काल होरा का पुसाल लेवलीन चंदन नोकर ना खंडना है मतलब माई समकी जाने वाले जगह खंडना है मकेने का मम्मी आवास साबे किया ना क्या दंग को हम टा तांडू अभी टा बाई वेला तीन दंग हम इरिदाव कम महिंद्र राज पक्ष में ते तुम्हारा मटा विरुद्ध पुआत पत निवेदन मैं कहती हूँ ने पहुँच तो ऐ दूर करते नहीं आता ना सटना दें हलुत में दी गया थी ना ये दी गया था माय बैंक हो रही पहुँच तो कार है देखो लो कसाद में था मामा तमुन्ना से लड़की आने के मधे अपने लोग पॉलिटिकल होरा डील ने अपने लोग होरा की भी सुनने हैं अपने लोग दिखतरंग ने ने अपने लोग दिवे मतलब दहाड़ी ये सोंदे देने न टोना इतने कोड़े तमाहे मगे मगे में सातु टकला बिन्ने आत्मा त्रुप दिया कला बिन्ने United National Party leader Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that the country's economic woes began a long time before the COVID-19 pandemic broke out in the country. He made these comments at a meeting held in Homagama Electorate today. मैं इधर ही पाते हैं ना पक्ष वालीं, गैदर आर्थिक है हदन ना विसमति अन्य एक साथ जाति का पक्ष चेट पामना है। अदर में तो ना सीरु देना हम वक अमारु इन जी बात तो इन्हें। राज्य सेवे उन्हें, पुत्गली कांसे उन्हें, कोई व्यापार ही त्याग, अदर में पहाड़ है में एक के नाट मले भी लगती है। एक � लक्ष्य पहाकटर दी बनाए वैदिक करा हमुदा वे वैटु अट्टर वातावरण का वैदिक करा राज्य सेवेन तमाई अपिस सेल्ला में देना करते राठे शाल आर्थिक आर्बुदे तीनों के मेरा राठे आर्थिक आर्बुदे पटांग करते कोरोना एक का निमी पाले में पटांग करते विश्व विश्व राज्य सेवक के अंत दिन नतीयन दी मना नातरा मैं जनवरी माह से क्यों इतना निम्न ही निलंदार इंगे कैमेट तो नहीं तो वो पढ़ी कपान न पटांगत तो हाँ अनेक दी मना कपान न पटांगत तो सेल में क्या पुआ कि अन्न कैमेटी अभी आंडवा कैथिकल अरे नवेत्तु ये दी मना सेल में देनो अपे प्रतिपात्तीय अतः साली दी ला आर्थिक हदन Leader of the National People's Power and Colombo District candidate Anura Kumar Desanayaka states that both the Ranil and Sajid factions are incapable of leading an effective challenge to the government through the opposition as they are under obligation to the government due to their own previous misdeeds during their time in power. He made these comments when he addressed a public campaign held in Navinna yesterday. A public event organized by the National People's Power Movement worked off yesterday in Navinna under the patronage of the party's leader and Colombo district candidate Anura Kumar Desanayaka. Sajit Pemadas, Nimasa Amatthivare Hattit Innakut, Dina Panasdakim Pasu, Sajit Pemadas at Sanskutik Amatthyans at the Himuna, Eyatate Sanskutik Aramudala, Bara Amatthivare Abhavata, Sajit Pemadas at Pattu. Sanskutik Aramudala Vishyanta Anurupinovana Paradhi, Milena Tunda Tunsiyakata Asana Mudala, Jodhavala Ati Binawa, Eyat Labaditi Binawa Bala Eta Pata Hennim. Hari Eta Mukakwa Gedi, Lalit Tira Tunga Anusa Pela Pita Silre Dibe Dua Gedi TRC Gedi. Eya Haa Samana Beradda. साजित पेमेंट आस करलती हैं ना, दर जनादेश पर कमिशन ने करती हैं ना, ये कमिशन ने के में परीक्षण नहीं आना वाह, साजित के दिन टा याई तो होती बुना, नुएन ने कोहो मत, ये ऐ टा विपक्ष के टा पाना पोवन ना बे, नेगिट्टो सांस्कृतिक आरंभ दल की गोत वाड़ी बनी हुई ना, रानी लुप्रम सिंह के पुलान विपक्ष एनिसा ये गोलो निरंतर इन्म यहाँ पे तब विशिन पालने करना कांडा है मगबाट पत्ते ने कवाला करने बे एनिसा तुने इन्द्र के रीडन होती जनता वगे हाँडा पार्लिमेंट तो नियोजने के लिए में आईटीआर रक्षा करना हूँ तोरा पत्करे युतुवान ने माली मावी परिसा नहीं दे टिकट टेक गाने पलेविनी लो जायग्रन आप एक्स We'll return after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Oh. 
Welcome back in more news. Following instructions being issued by President Gota Bia Rajapaksa on the subject of ship generated waste that companies are currently paying foreign vessels for their waste. The Defense Ministry, along with environmental agencies, the Navy, Coast Guard, and the Ports Authority, will commence close monitoring of the industry from tomorrow. The order has been issued by the President in order to prevent damage to the country's environment and to turn the sector around, making into a revenue generating industry. The Marine Environmental Protection Agency has been given the mandate to draw up plans to monitor the current industry operators to ensure no environmental damage occurs through their operations. The Marine Environment Protection Authority, together with the Sri Lanka Navy, the Sri Lanka Coast Guard, the Central Environmental Authority, Sri Lanka Customs, Sri Lanka Ports Authority and the police, are set to begin monitoring ship-generated waste oil reception facilities in the country from tomorrow. The MEPA has launched a special program under the directives of President Gotabe Rajapaksa and with the support of Defence Secretary, Retired Major General Kamal Gunaratna. According to the MEPA, there are over 28 licensed SGW reception service providers in the country and the average annual collection of SGW oil in the country is 26,904 cubic metres while 7,404 cubic metres of garbage are collected by these listed companies. Although the MEPA doesn't come under the Defence Ministry's purview, the President has issued instructions to Defence Secretary Major General Kamal Gunaratna to get the Defence Ministry involved in drawing up an effective mechanism to develop the sector into a revenue-making venture. The Defence Secretary, at a meeting held at the Ministry of Defence yesterday, said President Rajapaksa had issued directives to restructure the SGW management process to provide adequate and effective reception facilities for any harmful substance or any other pollutant entering the country to prevent polluting marine and other environmental zones. At the meeting, the Defence Secretary revealed that the government has noticed shortcomings in the existing system where in most countries ships entering their ports pay for the removal of waste oil. However, in Sri Lanka, ships are paid for their waste oil. According to Major General Gunaratna, the Defence Ministry will facilitate, monitor and support the stakeholders to implement a new mechanism to transform SGW reception services into revenue-generating ventures. Major General Gunaratna had directed MEPA Chairperson Darshini Lahandapura to coordinate and nominate a team consisting of members representing all stakeholder institutions to inspect the process of all listed companies receiving SGW within or outside any port in Sri Lanka. In business news, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka reported that foreigners have pulled out a massive 5.1 billion rupees from government treasury bonds and bills in the past week. The report revealed that the current standing of foreign-held bonds and T-bills now remains at 16.4 billion rupees, falling from 21.6 billion during the 24th June to 1st July period. The central bank has reported an exodus of foreigners from the country's government securities market, resulting in a total of 5.1 billion rupees being pulled out from 24 June to 1st July this year. Accordingly, the value of government securities held by foreigners has now fallen from 21.6 billion rupees to 16.4 billion rupees between that period. The report further states that the total outstanding stock of treasury bills has decreased by 101 million rupees from 1.243 billion rupees to 1.142 billion rupees, while the total outstanding stock of treasury bonds has increased from 5.029 billion rupees to 5.089 billion rupees. Accordingly, short-term debt too has recorded a decrease, whilst long-term debt has recorded an increase during the past week. Further, the central bank has also issued 60 billion rupees of treasury bonds during an auction held on 29 June 2020. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan treasury bill yields fell across the board at the 1st July 2020 auction. Three-month yields were down to 5.08% from 5.5%, while six-month yields were down to 5.22% from 5.53%, and 12-month yields were down to 5.45% from 5.66%. Sri Lankan stocks ended 0.12% stronger in today's trading, with the old share price index gaining by 5.88 points to end at 5,081.78 at the end of market close. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks climbed 1.10% or 24.14 points to end at 2,212.70. Market turnover was 1.7 billion rupees while 74 stocks gained and 70 fell. Here's a brief report on today's market performance. 
today we saw the market in ending the green territory for the second consecutive trading session. However, the upward gain in the market was limited to about only 5 points because of the price dip in Ceylon Tobacco weighing heavily on the index. So at the start of the day, we saw the SPI rising above 20 points up to midday and then we saw a bit of selling pressure coming back into the market similar to the last couple of days and the market ended in the green however only with a gain of 5 points. So however, we saw a large number of crossings taking place today, boosting turnover for the day to around 1.7 billion rupees. So we saw crossings in John Keyes Holdings and a number of banks, and Nations Trust Bank, a Commercial Bank, a Sampat Bank and also OC's Reality saw crossings taking place. So all these crossings boosted turnover for the day and with that we, the turnover levels were slightly higher compared to the last couple of weeks. In terms of uh, retail investors, we saw mixed uh, reactions with uh, some staying on the sidelines and some of the investors more on buying interest. Because of that, the buying interest and selling pressure was uh, sort of equally weighted in the market. So with that, uh, the market gain was uh, slightly limited. In in international news, following a surge in new COVID-19 cases in India, the country has now overtaken Russia to be the third highest affected country in the world. Meanwhile, global cases continue to climb past 11 million as of yesterday as the United States continue to struggle with its efforts to combat the pandemic. India yesterday overtook Russia to record the world's third highest number of coronavirus infections at nearly 700,000, according to the latest data as the outbreak shows no sign of slowing. Health Ministry data from the world's second most populous country showed more than 23,000 new cases yesterday, down slightly from Sunday's record increase of almost 25,000. There have been almost 20,000 deaths in India since the first case was detected there in January. India now trails only the United States and Brazil in the number of COVID-19 cases. In the meantime, the number of global confirmed infections of COVID-19 continued climbing to 11,327,790 cases while the deaths caused by the virus rose to 532,340. The number of COVID-19 deaths in the United States topped 130,000 yesterday, reaching 130,248, according to the Center for Systems Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. A total of 2,931,142 cases have been reported in the country, an increase of over 55,000 from Sunday, according to the CSSE. And that's a wrap from here at First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Chanela Fernando. Good night.